Hello everyone, and welcome to the 36th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with strong and weak references in ARC, and uh, really what that means in properties and instance variables. And then I'm also going to be covering an Objective-C 2.0 feature, which has to do with using uh, synthesized properties to create your instance variables. So, kind of two different lessons in one, but the main one for this is really different ARC qualifiers such as strong and weak. Okay, so um, this code is basically the exact same as we had before. Uh, I've I changed the name of this instance variable to bear, like you know, a fluffy bear that your dog might chew on to death. That's basically what I mean, I mean by that name, if you're confused. Anyway, so uh, that just saves me from uh, having to say the toy property of my pet and the toy instance or the toy variable we created. You can see how there's some confusion there. So I just changed the names for this tutorial. And um, yeah, so that's basically all these files are pretty much the same. Uh, so that was our main.m, our toy, and actually I'll just run this for you so you remember how this works. Basically, we ns log our toy object, which returns our description, which is I am a toy, and our pet object uh, just returns the toy that it has. So it returns I am a toy as well. All right, so uh, with that, as you can see, our toy class just returns I am a toy, and it doesn't have any instance variables. And then basically, we have our pet uh, implementation here that just has the description returning the toy that it owns. So that's basically that. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is how you can use synthesize properties to create your instance variables. So this is a feature that uh, I think has been available for all of iOS and uh, Lion, or sorry, not Lion, Leopard 10.5, Mac, Mac OS 10.5 and above. So if you're on any of these platforms, you can use this feature, and I'm sure most of uh, my audience is. So anyway, uh, with that, Synthesized properties basically mean that you can delete your instance variable and your property with a synthesize will create the instance variable for you. So in this case we have a property called toy and we synthesize toy. And what the compiler will do is create an instance variable for you called toy as well. And uh, that's how that'll work. So basically instead of having, you know, um, instead of having just the uh, toy instance variable included in our in interface right here. Our synthesize property will create the toy instance variable to back up whatever it needs here. And of course, it'll also create the set toy and the toy method along with that. So it's kind of a nice feature. It uh, allows you to just skip writing the instance variable and then the property and the synthesize. So if you're going to create a property that's synthesized, you may as well use this for all. The modern runtime stuff. So um, another thing though that you can do with this is you can change the name of the instance variable and keep the property or uh, the property, the synthesized property the same. So if I wanted to change the instance variable name of this to toy, I can say synthesize toy gets underscore toy. And what this means is that it will create an instance variable called underscore toy, but it will create the toy object or sorry, the toy uh, property with set toy and toy as the methods. So as you can see, our code's complaining right here because we're trying to access an instance variable called toy. Of course, that doesn't exist. We have an instance variable called underscore toy. We also have the property called toy. And so if we wanted to access toy, we could use the property. We could say self.toy, which would call the, you know, the toy method. Or we can use the Objective-C square bracket syntax like so. And there we go. So either way works just fine, and we would have our toy object. And of course, if we wanted to use the instance variable directly, we could just say underscore toy, like that. So it's just a neat feature that you can use with um, Objective-C 2.0, and uh, it's just it creates the instance variable for you so that you don't have to write it as well. So just, just one of those nice things. Okay, so on to really what I wanted to talk about though for this tutorial, which is strong and weak references in ARC. So I briefly covered them in the last tutorial, but in this tutorial I want to kind of show you how or why they matter. So um, let's first cover what they mean. So strong reference 
basically means any time you want to take ownership of an object, you'll use a strong reference. So you're strongly holding on to whatever you're referencing. So in our code example here, for when we say pet set toy to bear, we're taking that bear object and we're saying, well, we're going to take ownership of that. So our toy property will now uh, you know, it will have the ownership of the bear. Since it's a strong property, it's going to say, well, our pet really wants to hold on to this toy that's passed in, and so we're going to hold on to it until we don't need it anymore, and then in which case we'll get rid of it. So, um, of course, that's how that works, and, uh, you know, since Arc is probably going to get rid of our toy, or our bear object, I should say, right here, then basically what we can... Uh, our, since our pet is going to take ownership of it right here, we still have access to. Oops, didn't want to move that. Still have access to our our whatever we passed into our pet here. So that's why when we ns log our bear right here, it's still fine because bear is in existence. But here our bear is going to be uh, released by arc. But again, since we had a strong reference to our bear from our pet object, then uh, when we ns log this you know, the toy that is passed in, which is the bear, is still in memory, so we can still print it out. Because, our again, our pet, since it has a strong reference to it, still is going to be, the, the object that's passed in is still going to remain as long as we want it. Alright, so that's basically how that works there. Now, of course, that's how strong references work. Anytime you want to really hold on to an object for yourself or take ownership, you'll use the strong reference. Now, if we want to use a weak reference, then we just say weak, like so. And when do we want to use a weak reference? Well, uh, one way is when we want to use a delegate, which I know I haven't covered really in anything yet, other than uh, the NS. Well, I haven't even really covered it in NS table view. The uh, only time I really covered it was when we were talking about NS table view data source in the Cocoa tutorials, but that's really the only case, and I really didn't go into much detail there either. But a delegate basically means any time you want to talk to an object that you don't really own. So uh, you might have some class that just has a reference to some other object that it wants to talk to. And that's kind of how delegates work, and there's more to that, of course, but that's the general outline of uh, how we use them. We just kind of take one object and we talk back and forth to another one. So with that, though, um, the property weak basically works uh, the same way. It means that we don't actually own the object we're talking to or that we're uh, going to point to. Uh, it only it, We're only going to point to that object as long as it's alive or being kept by someone else. So in uh, the case of, uh, for example, in Coco, when you create a button or you're working in a nib file and you drag a button out and you want to make a weak reference to the button, that means that we just want to talk to the button. We don't actually own it. And this is what you're going to be using when we get back into the Cocoa tutorials, is that we have, um, when your nib file basically will create the button for you, and it owns the button. We don't technically own the button as the class, we just want to reference the button in the nib file. So anytime you just want to reference something, you want to we use a weak reference as, as much as you can anyway. So again, weak reference just means you don't own the object, you just want to talk to it, and that's what uh, you'll use for when you're using IB outlet. You'll say that we just want to create a weak reference to this button, for example, and that means we don't own the button, we just want to have a pointer to it, and whenever the button goes away, then of course we don't reference it anymore, and that's what a weak reference means. Okay, so uh, what now when we try this out with a weak reference though, let's look at the difference here. So um, since our, we're passing in our bear object here to our toy property of our pet, and the toy property, like we said, is only a weak reference, which means it only has a reference as long as the object passed in is still in memory. So the bear is going to be released somewhere around here in arc. And that means that, well, now our toy, our toy property in our pet, really isn't being referenced anymore because uh, since right here we're not taking ownership of the bear, we're just saying we're going to point to the bear. We're, we're not going to actually uh, keep it for ourselves. So as soon as the bear is released right about here, that means that the pet no longer has a reference to the bear or the toy object that it's pointing to. So what happens is with a weak reference 
is that as soon as this bear is released by arc, basically, since we had a weak reference to the bear, and now we're not pointing to anything, because the bear is released in t back into memory, so with a weak reference, that means that the bear is no longer there, and so our toy property of our pet is not being pointed to anything, and that means that it's going to, uh, arc is going to go and set the toy property to nil. So that's an important thing to know about weak references, is that anytime you're not pointing to anything, the property is going to be set to nil, and, uh, you know, of course, whenever it's pointing to something, it, it'll be pointing to that. But as soon as the object it's pointing to is uh, released back into memory, and since we're not taking ownership of it, so as soon as the object it points to goes back into memory, and it's not being referenced anymore, that means that we're going to set the toy property of our pet to nil. So it's an important uh, thing for weak references, is that it'll set the property to nil, as soon as it doesn't have any reference to an object anymore. So how this will go through is that your bare object will be pr uh, be printed or ns log right here, and then down here, since our pet object no longer references the toy or no no longer references this bear because it's gone, so it's going to print out nil because, like I said, with weak references, your objects always get set to nil when they don't reference anything. So here we go, if we run this, you'll see I am a toy, and then we'll get nil, which is, uh, it says null there, but it just means it's a nil object in Objective-C. So that's basically how that works. Now, this is very different from what we used to have, which were assign properties. So if we go back here, and we change this to assign now, and you'll see that this is very different because, um, well, it's not very different, but they work the same way in that you're just pointing to an object, but a sign is different than weak because it won't set the property to be nil when it's done, or it's not pointing to it anymore. So how that'll look in your code is basically the pet set toy right here will say, well, now I'm going to, the, the toy property is going to point to this bear object. So that's all good. And then when the toy, when the bear right here gets released, now, the problem with this is that our pet is still going to be pointing to that bare memory. And so, it never gets set to nil with the assigned property. And what's going to happen is, well, our bear is going to be released, but our toy property of our pet is still pointing to that memory address. And so, this can this leads, or leads to uh, a lot of the memory issues that we used to have with um, uh, Objective-C, which was known as a dangling pointer, which means it's pointing to something that's really not there. And so we can see this in our code, or we might not see it, you'll kind of see, but if we run this right now, you'll see that we get, I am a toy, I am a toy, and this is really not right. Um, you know, what, what really happens here is that right about here in our code, our bare object is being released. And since we had, a, we had an assigned property for our toy, really, we don't the bear is gone and we're just referencing some memory that just happens to still be there. And what what happens in you know real applications is that this memory gets overridden all the time and then you go to point to that memory address and it's not the right thing anymore. So with the assign property this is very dangerous because since the toy property when it's not being referenced or it's not referencing anything since it's not set to nil in the assign property or the assign attribute it's it's just going to be pointing to that object that's no longer there. And so when we print this out, we get this really, uh, this output really isn't correct because we're just pointing, we're just printing out the object that used to be there. And it's really, it's really technically gone though. And you might even get in your code, it just kind of depends, um, but you might get a compile error, or not a compile error, sorry, you, you will get a runtime error, which uh, will be bad access because this means that we're, we're accessing something that doesn't exist anymore. So if you run this in your code, you might get, uh, it might stop your application and complain about bad access, but it's just, it's kind of up to how this happens. And so the assign property is kind of now being, uh, the name change is kind of happening in Arc to something that's more appropriate, which is called unsafe unretained. It means the exact same thing as assign, but it's just kind of a new wording for the assign uh, attribute for our properties. So if we say unsafe unretained, that means that this is very unsafe. You don't want to leave an object just pointing to something 
if you know if it doesn't exist anymore and that is the main problem with the assign property again because as soon as this bear goes away our pet object still is pointing to that memory even though it's gone and as soon as it gets overridden uh, that could cause some major issues in our program which will crash it so that's why as often as you can you're going to want to use a weak reference instead of a assign or unsafe unretained reference so if you can use a weak, that's uh, definitely preferred, but you can't always use weak for certain objects, and I'm not going to get into which ones those are, but basically uh, use weak as often as you can because it will always set the object to nil, and when you call any method to nil, uh, it doesn't really matter because it, it, does, it, it can accept the messages, but it won't crash your application. So that's important. So anytime you can use weak, that's what you're going to want to use. Again, all that means is that it doesn't take ownership of the object, but as soon as the object it's pointing to is gone from memory, it'll set itself to be nil. So our toy property will be set to nil with a weak reference. Okay, and that's why you get the output like this when you run it. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much all I really had for this tutorial. And uh, one last thing, though, that I should cover is that whenever you create an ins a variable in your code, and I'll actually just bring this back. Uh, whenever you create a variable in your code, and it's created as a strong reference object. So basically, you would have the or the uh, identifier, the qualifier, strong. So technically, without anything in front of it, you have a strong reference object, and that means that, of course, the pet object right here is going to, you know, it's going to be pointing to that object as long as it wants because it owns the object. Now, conversely, if you made the object with the weak reference, or the weak qualifier in front of an object, then that means that it's only going to point to it as long as something else has a reference to it. And of course, you really you really don't want to do this in uh, regular code like this, because, um, you know, that you're just creating an object here to a weak reference. And since weak means that it's not taking ownership of it, then that's a problem. And you're going to get a compile error saying, assigning retained object to weak variable. An object will release after assignment, which means basically this pet object is going to be released as soon as you create it. So um, that's, that's basically, though, the main difference between weak and strong. And you'll see in the Cocoa tutorials, hopefully, um, some different instances where you'll use weak and strong. And it certainly will make more sense uh, in the Cocoa tutorials than it makes in the Objective-C ones. But basically, the weak reference, all you really have to know is that it doesn't, it, it's all about ownership, really. So strong reference just means you want to own an object, and a weak reference means you don't, and you will set that object to nil if it doesn't reference anything. So that's, that's pretty much all you really have to know about uh, strong and weak references. And I'm sure we'll come across different situations in the coming tutorials, and you'll really grasp uh, how this works if you didn't get it too much in this tutorial. But anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the, qu the comments below, and I will see you next tutorial.